G'day guys and welcome to this business management lesson. In today's lesson we're looking at key knowledge point 413, that is unit 4, area of study 1 and the third key knowledge point for this area of study. Today specifically we're looking at key performance indicators as sources of data to analyse the performance of businesses. Now you'll notice by looking at it that this key knowledge point is the longest in terms of word count in the entire business management study design. And that's because this key knowledge point gives us a list of the different key performance indicators that we need to talk about. Now, key performance indicators are exactly what it says on the tin, exactly what their name would suggest. They are indicators or metrics or things that can be measured that the data that you receive from measuring them will in indicate to you the key performance of the business. When we're talking about key performance, we're talking about the aspects of the business that directly contribute to the achievement of business objectives. Take, for example, business objectives from the last area of study, operations management. Uh, one of your business objectives uh, for operations management is to be very efficient and effective. We know this, this is something that we studied. Uh, and so when we can look at key performance indicators to do with levels of wastage and levels of productivity to determine whether or not our business is being efficient. And certainly we know that business objectives included uh, things like to make a profit. If you cast your mind back to key knowledge point 312, to make a profit was one of our business objectives. And we know that efficiency and effectiveness from just operations has an impact on profitability of a business. And in this key knowledge point in this entire area of study. And in fact, in unit four, we're thinking outside of operations as well, um, different departments in the business, like the finance department or um, accounting department, whatever you would consider it. Uh, certainly sales and marketing teams would have be having an impact on these business objectives as well. So there are key performance indicators that we're about to talk about that look beyond the scope of just operations or just human resource management. Ultimately, the goal is to have reliable metrics that we can look at and gather data from so that we can make informed decisions in our business management. The first of the key performance indicators we're talking about is the percentage of market share. Now, this might sound a little bit familiar. Increasing percentage of market share or increasing market share is one of the business objectives you talked about in Key Knowledge Point 312 at the start of Unit 3. Well, in this case, the percentage of market share represents the, uh, the share that a business has um, when comparing its sales against its closest competitors within a market. It's almost always expressed as a percentage. And this pie chart above my head here gives you an example of what we're talking about. This pie chart shows you the relative market share of each of the big players in Australian grocery sales. So you can see that blue is Woolworths, orange is Coles, gray up there is Aldi, yellow is Metcash, which you might know as IGA, and blue, the darker blue is Other. That's the way it looked in 2017. And if we fast forward a few years, in 2023, there's been a change. I'll flick back and forth a couple of times. You can see that Woolworths in 2017 controlled uh, just over 36% of the market. In 2023, it's more like 37 you can see that Coles controlled 33% in 2017. In 2023, it's more like 28%. It's actually shrunk. Now uh, you can see that Aldi has gone slightly backwards uh, in the year 2023. IGA too has gone slightly backwards and they all seem to have lost market share, or except for Woolworths. The others all seem to have lost market share to other. And if we think uh, what about what that could be, it's certainly likely to be um, a result of Costco entering the Australian market over the last five years and other businesses like HelloFresh and the other meal delivery companies replacing what some families would have previously purchased from supermarkets. The next key performance indicator is a simple one. Once again, directly related to our business objectives from Key Knowledge Point 312. This is net profit. Net profit is calculated as the money left over after expenses have been deducted. This is not gross profit, this is net profit. This is just the money that your business has to play with or reinvest after it's paid its dividends, after it's paid the operating expenses, just the money left over. One of our business objectives was to make a profit. And so one of the things you can measure to determine whether or not your business is healthy or successful is, is it making a profit and how much profit is it making? 
that's going to give you a pretty clear sign if your business is healthy or not. Next is rate of productivity growth. Now, this is directly related to operations management in the sense that productivity is the output when compared against the input. What we want to see over time is that our business is getting more efficient. We want to see that we can produce more outputs without the same increase in inputs. We want to be able to make uh, better use of our inputs over time. And certainly in terms of rate of productivity growth, this is measuring the input for a period and then comparing it against another period and looking for improvements in that productivity data. Typically, this is done on a quarter by quarter basis, a month by month basis, or a year by year basis for manufacturing businesses. And certainly, if your productivity is going backwards, if you're actually seeing negative productivity growth, I know that's a little bit confusing. How could you possibly have negative growth? Surely it would be shrinkage or something. But no, you can have negative growth in business. Uh, if you're seeing negative growth, that's a sign that your business is becoming less efficient. And that's not what we want to see. We want to see an increasing efficiency over time. Now, number of sales is a nice, easy key knowledge point, to, uh, a key performance indicator to get your head around. The number of sales represents how competitive your products are and how attractive they are to the target market. If our, if our sales are increasing, that's good. If our sales are declining, that is not so good. You can look at your number of sales to get a pretty good idea of whether what you're offering the market is attracting customers. Now, rate of staff absenteeism is a measurement of how often employees aren't at work when they should be. How often are your employees rostered on and they call in sick or take the day off? If your rate of staff absenteeism is high, that means that your staff are taking a lot of time off. If your rate of product, if your rate of staff absenteeism is low, that indicates that your staff are very rarely taking time off. And generally speaking, something we learned in Unit 3 Area Study 2, engaged and motivated employees are more productive and efficient, is what's being measured here. Engaged and motivated employees typically are happier at work. Engaged and motivated employees are the ones who will show up even if they're feeling a little bit tired or a little bit like they don't really want to go to work today. But if they are gen generally pretty engaged with their work, they'll show up more often than not. It's in workplaces where employees are demotivated or disengaged that you would start to see people taking more time off. So rate of staff absenteeism is generally looked at as an indicator of employee morale and employee satisfaction. Level of staff turnover measures how often an employee resigns or leaves employment in the business and needs to be replaced. The one case where an employee leaves the business and doesn't need to be replaced would be if your business has made a redundancy and that wouldn't contribute to turnover, but resignations and retirement uh, and dismissal of other kinds uh, would all involve uh, an employee leaving their position, but that position needing to be filled. And every time that happens, it contributes to the level of staff turnover. Once again, engaged and motivated employees are probably happy. They've probably got job satisfaction. They're probably less likely to quit their job than employees that are unhappy in their role. So we can look at levels of staff turnover as an indicator of employee morale. In a business where employees are um, the beneficiaries of investment and training, where the managers are using Maslow's hierarchy of needs to look at the needs of their employees and work on strategies to motivate them, you would expect to see fewer employees resigning their posts or leaving each year or each quarter than in businesses where perhaps those strategies aren't being employed and employees are less happy. Now, level of wastage is a nice easy one considering we just finished off studying operations management. Wastage occurs when there are defects or errors in production. If there are defects or errors in production, it means that inputs that have been paid for aren't making it into outputs. They're not adding value to those outputs. So measuring the amount of wastage that your operation system creates or your business creates as a whole is a good measurement of the efficiency of your business. We typically would like to see zero wastage. That would indicate that you are being very efficient with the use of your inputs and certainly lean management principles like pull, one piece flow, tact, and zero defects 
are all designed to minimize the amount of wastage that your business produces. So looking at how much wastage your business produces is a good way to determine whether or not your business is succeeding in attempts to be efficient. Number of customer complaints refers to the number of times a customer has made their dissatisfaction known, whether that be just communicating it to the business or reviews online, perhaps Google reviews. Every time a customer goes out of their way to document that they're unhappy, they're probably expressing what five other customers who were unhappy but didn't bother to take the step of communicating that have thought. Every time you look at a business online, every time you see a one-star review, it's left by someone who is probably a bit more unhappy than five or six other customers, but it means that they can't be the only person who's had a negative experience. Number of customer complaints uh, can represent many things, but unless the complaints are very specific, all that you know is the customers are unhappy. And it might take a bit of market research, it might take a bit of reaching out to these customers that have made these complaints to identify what it is that they were unhappy about if they've been imprecise in their criticism, um, but certainly it will represent that there might be problems in your business that require corrective action. Now, number of website hits refers to the number of users who visit a business's website. Typically, this is going to be of significant interest to businesses that have their operations online, such as Google or Netflix. Uh, it's slightly less important for businesses that don't, com uh, don't conduct their operations through the internet, but still a very, very good indicator of the general interest out there in the community for that business. And so every business should be measuring the number of website hits or the number of social media interactions they get if that is the way that they're going to measure how attractive they are to their audience uh, online. And number of workplace accidents is a key performance indicator. We know from looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs that safety and security of your employees is very important for, measure, uh, for ensuring that they are engaged and motivated. And well, really, if there are a lot of accidents happening at work, they're probably not gonna feel that safe. So number of workplace accidents includes injuries, near misses, and any event that causes damage to assets or resources. Ultimately, accidents are defects, they're errors. Whether they're occurring in production or whether they're occurring in other areas of the business, they're going to represent increased costs. They're going to represent uh, inefficiencies with um, time, there might be things that require corrective action or require attention that slow down operations, slow down production. And certainly if employees are getting injured or if employees are nearly getting injured quite regularly, they're not gonna feel safe at work. And so number of workplace accidents is a metric used to measure all sorts of things from employee uh, attitudes re with regards to safety or whether the workplace is safe for employees and also efficiencies and the occurrence of defects in your business. Now that's a lot, right? We're measuring all these things. We're getting data about all these things. How do you use KPI data? Well, here's an example for you. Co is a business that sells natural cleaning products. And let's say for example, that Co's net profit figure for the last quarter, for the last quarter of the year, the last three months was $55,000. So we've measured the net profit KPI and we've determined that the net profit was $55,000. We've got to ask ourselves, is that good? And the simple answer is, we don't know. What was it before? Unless you can compare that net profit data against previous net profit data, you'd have no idea if that's good. $55,000 of net profit sounds great. But if their profit the quarter before was a million dollars, you'd have to say, that's terrible. Something's gone terribly wrong with the business and they need to take some pretty swift action to determine what's gone wrong so they can take corrective action and try and restore their profitability. Certainly comparing that against past data, if previously they weren't making a profit at all, maybe you'd say $55,000 is great. Maybe it represents real growth for the business and increased business success. So using KPI data, it's important that it is benchmarked against previous data or similar data. Sometimes you can look at data from your competitors. Certainly if you're looking at percentage of market share, you can just look at competitors' sales figures to work out whether or not your percentage of market share is good. Once again, it will depend if it's 
increasing or decreasing. It doesn't really matter what it is. What you want to see is that it's increasing. You want your competitiveness to be making you more attractive to customers. Uh, same with level of wastage. If you're producing two metric tons of waste uh, each quarter this year, is that good? Is that bad? Well, it depends how much you're making this time last year. If you're making 10 metric tons this time last year, your efforts to improve efficiency in your business must be working wonders. If this is a doubling of the waste that you're producing previously, it's probably not good and requires attention. KPI data is almost useless on its own. It needs to be benchmarked against previous data or similar data from other sources for you to determine whether or not this represents business health or a problem in your business that requires attention. In summary for this key knowledge point, KPI data, key performance indicator data, will help you determine the health of your business. It will help you measure whether your business is successful. It will help you identify if there are problems in your business that require attention and require the implementation of corrective action. It is so important when measuring KPI data that the data is benchmarked against similar data, uh, historical data or similar data from another source so that you can determine realistically whether that data is good or whether that data is poor. That's all for today. See you next time.